Hello everyone, I'm Ping Yu Chen from IBM Research. Thanks for watching this video, uh, no matter where you are and wherever you are. Uh, so let me start sharing my screen. So today I'm going to share uh, my thoughts and uh, uh, provide a holistic view about the adversarial robustness of machine learning models. Um, so let's start from uh, by um, kind of looking back at the, the deep learning revolution. So we know uh, this deep learning uh, and especially neural networks has bring a lot of excitement uh, and uh, contribute uh, to the advances of AI technology. Uh, so we can see uh, in the past few years um, the uh, uh, the classification error on uh, ImageNet uh, data sets continue to uh, decrease in a very uh, rapid speed and even surpassing humans' performance. Uh, and deep learning is really bringing a revolution uh, because of the availability of uh, a sufficient number of the data uh, and the uh, complex and uh, uh, models that are such as the neural networks that can ca capture the uh, complex mapping between data and its associated labels. And most importantly, um, the sufficient uh, computation power enabled by GPUs. Um, so the AI pioneers like Yang La Kun are now describe deep learning uh, as a, a, a system uh, and instead of just being an algorithm. So it's, it's say, he says it's a, deep learning is a, the concept of building a machine by assembling parameterized function blocks and training them with some sort of gradient-based optimization methods. Uh, you are free to choose your architecture, learning paradigms, and so on. So we are basically creating a learning system uh, rather than a specific algorithm uh, when we are uh, now uh, uh, using uh, our modern AI technology. Um, so one naturally question that arises is, okay, now we are achieving a very such high accuracy on specific tasks. Uh, are we satisfied? What's next? Um, then we realize, okay, the, the challenges are not uh, finished yet. Well, we have this uh, People have observed these uh, great uh, adversarial examples that really, you know, uh, pose a lot of uh, questions and concerns uh, in our uh, AI research community as well as the general uh, audience and end users. So these are images that, that are undergo a very small, uh, tiny modification uh, that, that cannot be captured by human eyes, but they actually being amplified by a machine learning model and uh, will cause uh, the prediction to uh, change. So for example, an ostrich image with a slight modification can be misclassified as a safe, as a shoe shot, as a vacuum, and so on. So this model that I'm demonstrating is actually one of the best performing model uh, on, on ImageNet. Uh, and although I'm most of the time I'm, I'm using images as an illustrating example, Actually, other data modalities like text, um, like speech, and so on, uh, they are they are also subject to this type of uh, adversarial examples. So it's kind of a universal uh, risks and universal concern uh, when we are talking about a deep learning technology in general. Um, so one notion I, I hope to uh, bring to this uh, community is uh, ac accuracy. Actually, does not. Uh, uh, equal to adversarial robustness. So one very interesting experiment that we did uh, back in 2018 is uh, we take all the available uh, image net models that we could found online uh, and rank them in terms of the uh, top one accuracy. That's actually the, the metric used to benchmark which model is better, uh, quote unquote. Um, that will become the X uh, axis. And uh, on the Y axis, we actually rank uh, their robustness in terms of how easy uh, it is uh, for each model to alter um, the prediction uh, of, of uh, the, the same uh, set of uh, data inputs. And to our surprise, uh, there we can observe a trend that uh, a more accurate model also at the same time seems to be more sensitive uh, to these adversarial uh, perturbations. And that certainly creates uh, an undesirable trade-off between accuracy and uh, robustness. So we certainly hope that, that uh, to make our model practical and useful, we certainly want our models are not only accurate, uh, but also robust uh, to uh, small perturbations or uh, malicious uh, modifications uh, on the data inputs. So why do we care so much about adversarial robustness? So formally, we can define uh, this adversarial robustness as a, 
of a study to um, focus on the prediction evasive manipulation on an AI model, particularly when they are being deployed at the test time, for, for example, as a product or as a uh, API that the, the users can use. And there are several reasons we are very serious about this adversarial robustness. So first thing is it, uh, it, it always uh, associated with the crisis in trust. Because fundamentally, these adversarial examples exist, indicate there is an inconsistent um, decision-making process between humans and machines. So um, if this concern is true, then the, its end users will hold their reservations when they are trying to use this uh, AI technology for high stake uh, decision makings uh, or even safety critical uh, 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 tasks like autonomous driving cars. Uh, so for example, uh, people have shown like uh, autonomous driving cars uh, systems can be uh, easily fooled, uh, for example, by misclassifying a stop sign with some uh, stickers, adversary stickers, uh, 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 classify a uh, um, uh, stop sign into a speed limit, or um, uh, will force uh, the autonomous driving system to drive in the wrong lane. And we also see um, this uh, um, other cost induced by not having a robust enough machine learning model. So we see this misinformation attacks uh, coming out of these uh, um, AI methods and also uh, some products that uh, will soon become toxic and not non-useful uh, because of this uh, um, uh, uh, malicious interaction uh, with these online users and, and eventually poisoned uh, this online uh, uh, agent, chatting chatbot agent. And fundamentally, if you are a machine learning researcher, you will be very curious uh, in terms of why I have a model that already give me a surprisingly high test accuracy, but still, uh, uh, this the test accuracy does not generalize to the notion of robustness. It is still vulnerable to these other personal examples. Uh, does this uh, observation indicate there is a limitation in the, uh, the current approach of training machine learning models? Uh, so these are the, uh, the reasons why we care so much about adversarial robustness. Um, so really looking beyond accuracy, there is a whole new domain that kind of been booming in the past few years so that's uh, related to trusted uh, worthy uh, AI or trustworthy machine learning. Uh, and uh, above, uh, uh, underneath which there are several topics that, that catch people's attention including fairness, including um, explainability, interpretability, and of course, adversarial robustness. So we do see a kind of exponential growth um, in a number of uh, papers uh, and published each year. And uh, uh, so uh, in collaboration with many of my colleagues at IBM Research and our collaborators in academia, uh, we have been working on adversarial robustness uh, for a while, so since 2017. And we have uh, published together more than 30 papers at the top AI machine learning conferences. And we have a, a good coverage in terms of the spectrum of the adversarial robustness, um, including attack, uh, defense, uh, evaluation, certification methods, as well as novel applications uh, based on the lessons we learned from adversarial robustness. Uh, so it's a very um, um, fun um, dynamic. So it's actually a very active research field on its own. And one of the um, kind of the benefit of working on this uh, uh, research area is you, you feel very engaged from the community because uh, these uh, problems, especially adversarial robustness, is something that end, end users and general audience care a lot about. Uh, so you, you will uh, get, we have the opportunity to get a lot of uh, insights and feedback and uh, uh, news coverage uh, based on the uh, uh, things we have done in terms of discovering new threats or uh, ways to uh, make our AI system more robust. So here I'm going to provide a holistic view of adversarial robustness. So uh, if you think about this uh, uh, life cycle of uh, developing an AI or a machine learning model, we can roughly separate uh, this uh, process into two phases. There is a training phase and there is also a testing phase. So in training phase, uh, we collect data, we provide annotations to the data, and then we choose which model we are going to train uh, those uh, uh, data and then what tasks we are going to solve. Once you have the model trend, right, we then uh, deploy our model as a service or as a product. Uh, and based on the, how you deploy the model, it could be a black box model or it could be a white box model. 
uh, depending on how, how much the user know about the model uh, being used. So having this uh, uh, machine learning lifecycle in mind, we can then talk about these adversarial uh, uh, threats that could happen in the lifecycle. So it, uh, there are several types of uh, uh, adversarial attacks that could happen and have been considered uh, in our community. Uh, and uh, they differ by the assumptions uh, we make on the attacker in terms of uh, which part uh, could be possibly compromised by an attacker. So for example, some attack may assume that the attacker has the ability to manipulate the data. Uh, some attacks may assume the, uh, the attacker has the ability to see uh, the, the models being deployed. Um, and some attacks assume the, uh, the attacker did not know the model, but it has the ability to interact and observe uh, the output uh, of the, the model being deployed. Uh, and I want to emphasize that this uh, adversarial robustness for machine learning, uh, it, it really differentiates it itself from um, um, traditional or classical security problems uh, when, we, when we are talking about admission control or uh, vulnerabilities and protocol. So one uh, very uh, unique um, property of adversarial robustness is uh, the learning uh, function is really at the core of this adversarial robustness. So a, a lot of times we are talking about uh, this uh, vulnerability in terms of uh, involving a learning process, which could be a black box uh, uh, process when we are, especially when we are thinking about the neural networks. So uh, it is very imperative that we have to understand how a machine learns or a neural network learns uh, and, and in order to uh, assess its uh, risks and have a better understanding of what uh, uh, in terms of the studies uh, in adversarial robustness. Um, I also want to highlight that while our main focus is on the AI uh, or the machine learning part, uh, we should uh, also um, have the right mindset that uh, when we are talking about the vulnerability as a system or robustness as a system perspective, uh, AI or machine learning component is just one piece uh, of, the, uh, of the system. There are other things in the equations. So for example, if you are talking about autonomous driving systems, there are also sensors or that deal with analog signals and doing sampling from the environments and have these observable states. Then there are also control units that uh, help you to uh, interact between these uh, sensing modules to control modules and, uh, that, that, uh, and also that, that drives your machine, uh, your, your cars and so on. So overall, uh, AI technology, although it is a jewel of the crown, uh, we should, uh, when we are trying to think about uh, building a robust and trustworthy system, uh, we should have to build, uh, grow into this uh, system uh, mindset. And just to make uh, uh, these examples concrete, uh, we uh, have created uh, uh, some use, use cases uh, and also especially these adversarial machine learning um, threat metrics uh, that help uh, people explore and, uh, and provide uh, use cases and examples of how uh, adversarial robustness, uh, these threats can be a practical concern um, uh, in different uh, scenarios and especially uh, according to different uh, adversarial attack types uh, that we mentioned in an earlier slide. And there is also a very interesting website that uh, reports the, the incidents uh, caused by this AI technology. So we, you, it can give you uh, uh, some uh, more understanding about uh, uh, the, the, the concerns or the uh, um, uh, the issues that we are dealing with and uh, the consequences if we are not taking this uh, problem seriously. Um, so this slide, I, I, I think this is one of the most important slides uh, in my talk. So this is the, the roadmap that I imagined uh, toward uh, the, the holistic adversarial robustness. So an ideal uh, adversarial robustness uh, uh, testing and evaluation and improving pipeline uh, I would uh, say there are three important uh, properties that uh, it, it should have. Uh, the first thing is it should be model agnostic. Uh, it should be uh, independent, maximally independent of what uh, uh, are the underlying uh, model uh, you are using. Uh, and also, yeah, but on the other hand, it should be data or domain specific. So a lot of times we are really relying on the specific properties of uh, the data or the domain in order to help us uh, um, improve or harden the robustness of the machine learning system. And lastly, uh, the solutions has to be practical. That means it has to be uh, efficiently implementable. Uh, it should uh, maximally preserve the utility, for example, the accuracy 
uh, of the machine learning model when you uh, uh, add some defenses to the system. And then it should also be compatible to existing systems. So uh, the ideal case would always be adding some patches or some hardening measures to the existing system rather than you know, uh, reinventing the whole system and build the system from scratch um, uh, entirely. Uh, and a lot of times I, I'm, I'm advocating the notion of a penetration testing. So we have to uh, care about the, the vulnerabilities when we are training the model, when we are testing the model, and when the model is deployed. That means we need to continuously monitoring uh, the states of the, the models that we are deploying. And in terms of uh, uh, this holistic view, right? So when we are talking about attack, we are basically talking about how do we find bugs or uh, blind spots for the uh, machine learning system of our interest. And that uh, bugs also depends on how you deploy your machine learning model. It is, is it a white box model is, or it is a black box model like an API um, kind of service. And when we are talking about defense, we are really talking about model hardening here. So how do we detect uh, whether there is an adversarial threat in the system or not? And once the threat is detected, how do we mitigate the such threat and uh, harden the system uh, to make the system resilient and robust uh, so to such states, uh, to such uh, adversarial attacks? Um, how do we fix the, the uh, potentially tempered model and clean uh, the, the viruses or the bugs that we found in the system that belongs to the defense? And then there is also certification. So how can we provide uh, some attack proof uh, metrics um, to certify uh, the level of robustness of our machine learning system. And these metrics have to be quantifiable and measurable and comparable across different models and different modalities. And this is very useful when it comes to um, uh, AI standard making, uh, also governance and regulation. And finally, um, there's also an aspect of applications to AI based on the lessons we learned uh, from this adversarial robustness. So once we discover those vulnerabilities, how can we leverage those findings uh, to enrich and boost our model performance, right? For example, through data augmentation, um, through a, 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 a novel way of reprogram your models to learn new tasks or uh, to uh, watermark uh, your models. Um, these uh, uh, novel applications are driven uh, from the experiences that we learned from uh, studying adversarial robustness. Um, let me make a concrete example of the different uh, attack threat models that we can consider when it comes to evasion attacks, which is a test time attack. So for example, when you are talking about white box models, that basically means uh, the model is transparent to an attacker, the model architecture, the weights and everything is known to an attacker. Uh, and so they are standard white box attack. And there's also an adaptive attack where you assume that the attacker not only knows the model, but he also knows what kind of defense you are going to use uh, against uh, uh, the, the potential attacker. So there's a really a, a game theoretic argument going on here. Um, and, and the other uh, case is the black box uh, 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 case where we consider a black box model where the internal uh, configurations are, are unknown to an attacker. Uh, this is very typical when you deploy a model as a service through API. So we never know what is the model behind that service. Uh, in this case, we, the attacker can still leverage the, the available information like model uh, output predictions or, only, or just the, the decisions from the model uh, to enable such an, an attack. Uh, or the, in the other case, you can also consider a transfer attack setting where I have a local Firefox model and I'm going to generate attacks on that local model and then do a transfer attack on the our victim model. Uh, so there are diff different uh, uh, um, types of evasion attacks that one, one can consider. And for each attack, uh, the level of robustness uh, will surely be different. Um, let me, uh, Kind of zoom in and focus on a very practical scenario that we have uh, considered uh, before that is uh, uh, robustness testing of a machine learning system with limited access so basically a black box attack uh, so there was a time where people believe my uh, my model should be robust if i don't reveal the, every information to a user or an, an attacker so for example i only release uh, my model's inference functions through an API. So the user would never know what kind of model I'm actually using to perform that inference. Um, so, uh, 
back in 2017, we showed that uh, that kind of black box uh, behavior is actually not robust enough against adversarial attacks. So the attacker can, can uh, all it needs is to use uh, the output, um, uh, the model output to estimate uh, the gradient with respect to the input to figure out uh, which part to, uh, needs to be modified in order to create a prediction evasive uh, uh, example. So for example, adding a perturbation to change a bagel um, image to be misclassified as a grand piano. So uh, basically a more practical attack will provide uh, 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 empirical robustness and, uh, and it really shows that uh, we have to pay more efforts in order to make our system uh, totally secure. So um, obscurity is not really the right way to think about the robustness. Um, and in more general, uh, I would uh, advocate defenses in terms of a, a two-stage approach. Right, so imagine I, we have a neural network that we want to um, defend. Uh, so uh, it could be a, a large models with a good test performance, but we also have some concerns whether it, it, could, it could carry some potential uh, adversarial uh, effects that we don't know because it was downloaded by an online uh, untrusted source. And in practice, we only have a, a handful of uh, clean data uh, for ins inspecting the integrity of such a model. Um, so we are advocating a two-phase uh, uh, strategy in the sense that you first wish to per, uh, perform an inspection in terms of detecting um, different types of uh, adversarial threats. Uh, and if uh, no flags are, are raised, then okay, then we declare the model is clean. If uh, we detected some adversarial uh, threats or adversarial effects uh, uh, in, in the given model, then we go to the patching phase. We try to fix the model because we still want to use that model, but we want to mitigate or um, wash away those adversarial e effects. So in a way, it's very similar to uh, this car inspection and then car fixing and then car wash scenario. It's just, it's just that we are talking about uh, the actual AI model instead of the car model here. Uh, and then I also want to talk, briefly talk about certification. So this is again an uh, attack proof and also attack independent measure of uh, robustness. So it, it, it ensures uh, a, a region such that um, no matter how uh, you manipulate uh, a given data input, as long as the data input still uh, belong to the safe region, then you have some robustness guarantee in the sense that uh, the, the model prediction will not alter uh, as long as uh, the perturbation uh, or the attack uh, manipulation is within a specified uh, range. Um, and in collaboration with uh, our collaborators in MIT and also UCLA, uh, we are trying to make this certification more efficient and also more general and inclusive. So we have trying to uh, uh, expand uh, the certification power to different uh, neural network structures and uh, including different uh, um, neural network layers and operations and make it more efficiently certifiable. Uh, we also have, uh, instead of uh, um, certification, we also have a, a, a very uh, clever score for robustness uh, evaluation that is also called clever. Uh, so it's an attack independent and also model agnostic metric uh, that is very efficient to compute even for deep neural networks. Um, so it's basically it's a score that uh, uh, approximately evaluates uh, the minimum distortion of a given data sample to the closest decision boundary. So it, 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 it basically represents the notion of a margin uh, for uh, deep and complex uh, networks. Uh, so one uh, use case that we advocate uh, to, to use Clever is really this before and after robustness comparison. So one uh, practical scenario that we often talk about is uh, what will happen to my model if I add or do a certain action or modification X uh, on, on the system. So uh, you can use Clever to benchmark or to quantify the, the level of uh, improvements you have made to the system by comparing the Clever score of the original model versus the Clever score of the modified model. And if you see the score being improved, then, then it basically it shows an indication of the, uh, uh, the, the, the positive side or basically showing the, the, the modification you make uh, actually uh, helps a robust, adversarial robustness. And of course, you can use this clever score to 
um, categorize the, the, uh, the behaviors of the adversarial example and compare um, uh, adversarial robustness of, across different models, like the 18 image net uh, models that uh, we showed earlier on. Um, so finally, here are some takeaways. So um, I hope I um, convince you and make you excited that adversarial robustness should be viewed as a new AI standard. So it's really uh, a very practical and uh, um, uh, uh, I would say necessary metric uh, other than uh, accuracy. And, this, and the reason is to, uh, to try to, we have to have this notion of robustness to make our machine learning system really trustworthy. Uh, but unfortunately, robustness does not come for free. So we have shown a lot of examples that the Brazil example can exist if we don't take this problem seriously. And a model having high accuracy does not imply it has good robustness. Um, and also the attack, while we are thinking about how do, we, how do we make our models more robust, at the same time, those adversaries, uh, adversarial attackers are also using, trying to use leverage AI um, uh, to, um, to disrupt our systems or make uh, um, malicious uh, gains. So for example, those like example like misinformations or um, defects. So how do we uh, win this arm race between uh, uh, an AI lies aware of adversary and also prevent uh, our adversary from using AI to create more damaging attacks that is actually um, a very um, important and uh, uh, imperative research topic. Uh, we also briefly talk about um, the idea of how do we properly evaluate and improve and, and test our model robustness. And once we detected uh, the adversarial threats in our system, uh, how do we improve uh, our system uh, by adding patching or also hardening the system? And there are different levels of uh, robustness that we can think about. And those levels of robustness can be quantifiable or measurable through this uh, attack agnostic uh, um, uh, scores or uh, verification techniques. Um, so if you are interested in our research, you know, feel free to follow me on Twitter or um, uh, uh, visit my website. Uh, and finally, I want to end uh, this talk by showing you some online resources if you want to know more about adversarial robustness. So there are uh, tutorials that are online and made available. Uh, and also there are some uh, open source tools that can help you explore and get uh, some hands-on experience uh, if you want to uh, evaluate the robustness of your uh, machine learning system or your model. Thank you.